Cheers. I've been waiting to try this one. It almost smells like piss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it really does. You ruined it for me. I can't. <laughs> right, hold your nose. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Slightly nervous. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, maybe you should be. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Alright, we'll get started. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, there you go. Pick a number, one through four. Three. Alright. I, I think you like this one. one. Put your hand up. That's the first one. <laughs> Cheers. I smell it first. Tell me what you think it is. Beer. Yeah? I think it's an IPA. It smells hoppy. It's definitely a beer. I think it's definitely an IPA. Alright, you can take that off. Am I right? Yeah. So it's called Citra Hope Life. Oh, hobo, hobo life. life. Hobo life. That's what I look like. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a session IPA. I went to this, this uh, place down in Northport that uh, has a whole bunch of random interesting beers. Uh, like I did a goat milk deal with somebody. Really? Uh, yeah. How was that? It was fun. I didn't notice the difference between that and an Asa stout. It was just like a dark stout. Okay. I tried a Christmas ale though. That oh. was gross. Really? That I love gross. Christmas oh, beers. No. I filmed it in September. So it was from like the previous Christmas beer. <laughs> I don't like IPAs. At all. Yeah, neither do I. It's super hoppy. Yeah. It's almost like drinking Bud. Not like Bud the beer, like Bud the herb. It tastes like mm -hmm. weed smells. I think Heineken smells like that too, though. I don't know. I don't mess with Heineken. Or like... Any like uh, name was beer. it Corona? Like oh, Corona smells like beers? it too, yeah. Like I, or like Bud Light. I can't do... Even Bud. I'm like a beer prude. Yeah. yeah it's gotta be a good <laughs> beer. Alright, so introduce yourself. So, my name's Anthony Nazario. I'm a chef. And guitarist. You're not just any chef, though. Yeah, I'm just a chef. No, I'll get out of here. So, this chef has been nominated for uh, Best Chef of Long Island. Oh, you've been nominated a couple times. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. One year when I was working at the, the restaurant that they had me under, and then like another two years after. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought it was just At the same one. restaurant that I didn't work at anymore. Wow, so two or three Under years. like the wrong spelled last name, too. It was great. It was phenomenal. I mean, that's a pretty big deal, though. Out of yeah. all the restaurants and all the chefs on Long Island to be nominated as one of the best chefs. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's Pretty definitely, good. definitely cool. I didn't even know any of the years until someone had told me. Like, yeah. it's not like, I think it's like a Beth page mm -hmm. that runs it or something, and it's, they don't contact you to let you know that you're in the running or anything. That's so so be fun. like, Maybe they random. didn't, they contacted Anthony Nazario, the other, yeah, like, the wrong the Anthony Nazario with two Z's in it. <laughs> but like, for those people that don't know, like, Beth page is a bank here, it's Beth page Federal Credit Union. Um, but like it's like a big thing for Long Island. There's probably like 50 different categories, like best wine yeah, bar, yeah. best best bar, best best um, restaurant, best gastro pub, best late night entertainment, yeah, uh, best yeah. band, best singer, best uh -huh. like yeah, it's not best just best food. Anything Long Island though, but like I mean, there's a couple million people on Long Island, so yeah, yeah. And to be nominated is a pretty 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 cool do deal. So how long have you been in the industry for? How'd you get in the industry too? So Sarah, my wife, actually got me my first kitchen job on Fire Island. When I was 17, I started as a dishwasher. It was supposed to be for one weekend. and uh, 13 years later. 13 years later. I mean, I took some time off when I was, I finished high school, went to school for music for a while. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after the music thing wasn't working out, that's when I uh, decided to go to a culinary trade, trade school for six months and uh, do a three month externship after. And I just kind of stayed in that kitchen for a while where I did my externship. And where was that? That was um, Mirabelle in Stony Brook. Oh, okay, Working yeah. for Guy Rouge. We're, oh, we're doing more? Oh, we got a couple. All right. <laughs> All right, one, two, four. One. This one's interesting. It's part of the World Beer Club. Ah, you gave it away. Gold Award for 2006. Oh, spilt it all over the place. You want this to clean it up? Yeah, <laughs> while you were in it. <laughs> oh, I'm making a mess. Put your hand in Yeah, there you go. Here. Cheers. I can't smell this one. I guess a little IPA on my face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one's good. Wow, you, interesting. You can taste what it is once I tell you. I, you might be able to tell I'm your chef. Hold on, I gotta get a set. I still have like that IPA oh, in good. my mouth, on my palate. Do you want to cleanse your palate? No, I'm okay. I can't tell what it is. Yeah, you can take it off. That's really good. So that's a granola brown ale. Ah. You can taste the granola, Yeah, I can right? taste the granola now. I couldn't pinpoint what it was. But we have to know that it's granola. Yeah. It almost tasted chocolatey. I am. It does. It does taste chocolatey. Black Hog Brewing Company. Where are they out of? Connecticut. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, Oxford, Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> IPA coming back up. <laughs> yeah, right? Hobo life. <laughs> Hobo life. So, so being a chef, so let's go back to that really quick. When you walk into a restaurant, what do you look for? Like, what... Tell the people what they should do. Walk into another restaurant. Yeah, when you walk into another restaurant, like what are the things that you look for to stay away from, or to like, oh, this is gonna be good. Okay, so when you go to a nice restaurant or a supposedly nice restaurant, the first thing you should do is go to the bathroom. 
Okay. I know this sounds absolutely ridiculous. The thing is, is if their bathroom is clean, then the rest of the restaurant will be clean. If they don't take the time to keep the bathrooms clean, then the likeliness of them taking time to make sure the rest of the restaurant is clean is unlikely. But is that with any restaurant? Or yeah, that... that's with, like, I mean, even chain restaurants, you know what I mean? Like, if you go to an Applebee's, let's say, for example, the bathrooms are dirty, most likely that the kitchen's going to be dirty. That's I know the court, like, it doesn't sound like it should link up, but it really no, does. Oh, I get you it. Know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that, that's if, really interesting. If you ever go to a taqueria in California and it's dirty, eat there. There's different standards. A mom and pop place and they just look dirty, it's probably going to be good food. Okay. I don't know why it works that way. You go to a chain restaurant, it's but dirty, the, but, don't eat there. Well, yeah, but then it, I'm sure if it looks dirty, it's also probably dirty. It, it, but it tastes <laughs> so good. Okay. You know? <laughs> but what about In a good now, way. <laughs> what about other things? Like, are there any other cues that you look for? Like, um, like the staff or, like, how things are placed or anything like that? Not necessarily how things are placed. I would say, uh, usually get a drink, I would say, before you get food. Okay. So if your drink isn't that good, don't have high expectations on the food. Okay. Now, what are your expectations? Because you're like a... So like, um, what do you, when you go to a restaurant, like, is it hard to impress you? Is it easy to impress you? Like, are you able to switch S- it off? Sarah says I'm, I'm hard to impress... But I, like, it's weird, because when I go out to eat, I really don't want, I'm not looking for my food when I go out to eat. I just want to eat good food, in general. I don't have, like, a standard, let's say. I mean, the term fine dining on Long Island is very tough. There are a lot of restaurants that want to do fine dining, like, let's say, your Manhattan fine dining, like your Eleven Madisons or your Danielle Baloods. But it's hard, because the clientele... Oh, Long Island isn't the same as Manhattan. Oh, that's interesting. You know, you know, because if you, you go to fine dining in Manhattan, you're spending like three, four hundred dollars, and you're getting a plate, like a person. No, like a person, let's say, and you're getting say twenty something courses, and these are long thought out dishes that take a lot of time to execute. Where fine dining on Long, Long Island, I feel people you look at a steakhouse, for example. You know, they consider themselves fine dining, but that's because aside from steaks, they do plated food that costs X amount of money, but it, it's a different standard. It's because not the people same. can't afford what they can afford in Manhattan. That and I feel like people's palates are different here than in the city, even though we're so close. It's and culturally we're, different. Yeah, yeah, it's culturally different. You know what I mean? Not as advantageous. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, that makes know. sense. It's really interesting. I try not to go out to eat with expectations because then if I'm let down, I don't enjoy the meal. What about yeah. home cooked f- food? Like I, that, I prefer that over anything. Like we had lasagna last night. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that was good, good lasagna. lasagna. Stinking you know good lasagna, lasagna, man. You know. I felt sick. I <laughs> so did so I. <laughs> if I'm going back for seconds, it's a comp. Or thirds, yeah, like third, yeah. <laughs> you know. Or these days, it's like if my daughter's eating it, then I know we're okay. Oh, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, throw that blindfold deck on. All right. I don't know what my hair looks like. Well, let's go for. Okay. Yeah, you get to go. Cheers. This is, cheers. I'm waiting to try this one. This one almost smells like piss. <laughs> It does. <laughs> Dude, it legitimately it smells like a diaper I'm about to change. Oh, it really does. He ruined it for me. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold like... your nose. Oh, it tastes much better than it smells. Oh, it's actually pretty good. It almost has like a, a fruity taste to it. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. Right? It's light. It's very light. It smells like it'd have like spice. Kind yeah. Of, but it doesn't. It has a really light spice. Right? Yeah, you know, it almost smells like a like a pumpkin beer. Oh, it does. Oh, it, it kind of tastes like a pumpkin beer. All right, Wait, let's ready? take the blindfold off and see what's up. So this is a chai solstice tea. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I've been really interested to try this one, the chai tea. It's a tea. I'm sorry, chai beer. It's a beer. Oh, it's a beer. <laughs> <laughs> this is good, man. It's got a weird aftertaste, though. Like, I, I have a flower in my mouth. Yeah. All right, so now we're in hashtag story time. Hashtag story time. <laughs> trade, everybody has oh, you want, stories. you want to trade story? A lot of my trade is pranks, man. There's like your standard ones where like you'll have a new busboy or server start. It's like their first time working in a restaurant. The coffee machines, they have hot water, but they're linked to the hot water line. So you'll ask them to like empty the hot water. We'll <laughs> <laughs> sit there for like an hour just pouring hot water into a pitcher, dumping it in the sink. But meanwhile, it's never gonna stop. This is a lesson that I've learned. You do not want to get into a prank with him. <laughs> it's like every time I'm like thinking about doing a prank with him, I think of the repercussions of where this will end up. I'm like, no, it's not worth this momentary pleasure because it's, it's pain gonna is pay gonna be so much worse. And so uh, we saved. I think it was like nine or ten. Oh sand my god. <laughs> We go to the manager's office. We're lifting up the ceiling tiles, and we're using butcher's twine and tying them to the bottom jaws of the, the fish, tying them to the beams 
of the tiles and then tucking them in. So about a week or two goes by. Me and Eric had completely forgotten about it. He comes into the kitchen and he goes, what did you do? Higher office reeks. We go to his office and it smelled like death. At this point, there was like some wet marks in the ceiling tiles from oh. the fish. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was bad, dude. Started pushing the tiles up and head started popping down, hanging. <laughs> Forgot about the AC one. I think I actually took like salmon scraps at one point and put them in his car under his driver's seat too. So he, he would leave work and go into his car and it smelled oh, just as foul. And this was like man. midsummer too. And, and that's why I don't get these. <laughs> he, was, he was really mad and didn't want anything to do with it. Mike... If you're watching this, I'm still not sorry. You, did you ever hear about that whole thing with the cans where it's like, if you don't clean them the first? The Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if that's still an issue. I don't know. This kind of looks like rat poop on it. Oh, did you hear that? You should wash your avocados before, before cutting into them. One in every six avocados has traces of listeria on it. So I should wash one out of six of them? <laughs> Russian roulette. <laughs> or really like Spanish roulette. Yeah. <laughs> California roulette. You're all set. All right, cheers. Cheers. Oh, dude, this one doesn't smell that great either. I feel like it smells like a typical, if you walk into a microbrewery, what it smells like. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know I don't, if I like this one. I don't mind it. They honestly kind of... That's <laughs> what happens when you when you taste four beers. You get pretty gassy. It tastes like a standard beer that you get like at a bar, like at a restaurant. We have a, what's interesting is we have a lot of a lot of pretty well known uh, breweries like nationwide yeah. on Long Island. Yeah, it's pretty so, sick. So let us know Blue if you're point. not if you're not from this area. I'm gonna name a couple and let us know if you have any of these in your. Um, yeah, because blue. because uh, my friend Johnny, uh, who is my best friend, yeah, yeah. Um, goes to school in Emory, and they he they have San City in. They have Sand City in Atlanta. That's like local, local. That's, That's like, like right around the corner, corner like yeah, down the street. Like I can yeah, walk there. yeah. So like we have uh, Blue Point, Montauk, Sand City, Brooklyn, but that's not part of Long. I don't consider Brooklyn part of the island. It's not part of On Long. A map. It's not part of Long. The don't get me started. Like, it's not. The I'm gonna ask you to leave. In Long Island, <laughs> Greenport. Greenport. Greenport is one. a pretty big one. Well, great, yeah, Great South Bay is that a big one? Yeah. Big. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So let let us know if they like in your area if you're not from New York if they have those any of those beers. Cool. Any last remarks before we head out? Um, no. Alright, well, thanks for no. being a part of the show, Dude, man. thanks for having thanks me. Thanks for drinking with Jacob. Dude, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> so I think my favorites for, for um, this afternoon, I think one is going to have to be our Black Hog, what was this, a brown ale, right? I think second, the chai. Third is going to be Hobo Life. The last one, this prairie dude from Oklahoma it was, right? Didn't really do it for me either.